and welcome back to my channel. My cat wants to leave, but she attacks my other cat, so she can't leave. Wait, let's just... There <laughs> we go. Problem solved. I have had a very productive week this week, and I'll tell you for why. I released my first single. It's called Ribcage. It is now available on all well-known platforms. opportunity just to tell you some top tips that I have encountered with regards to getting inspired and to not procrastinate because this is something I have a massive massive problem with I love delaying work it's my favorite activity but um, I have how many four five I can't remember some top tips that I'm going to share with you so let's just see let's get oh I'm going to do the thing that Wendy does let's get <laughs> Oh, how does she do it? Okay, she probably doesn't have a lamp there. Let's get into the video. Oh, damn it. <laughs> so my first point is actually from Mark Manson's book, The Subtle Art of Not Giving a Fuck, which is an incredible read. He makes the argument that rather than it being inspiration, motivation, action, that we can actually use the action to inspire and motivate. So it's a bit more of a cycle than, you know, a one-way road. So if we want to feel inspired and motivated, quite often the best way to do that is to actually start the action, is to actually do something. So if you think about, I don't know, when I was in school and I'd be writing an essay, and I didn't particularly want to write the essay, I wasn't, I didn't feel inspired or motivated to write the essay, but as soon as I actually made a start on it, Ideas would start flowing and I would get into some sort of rhythm. I was definitely feeling the motivation in order to get it finished. Another example is we're currently stripping the paint off the stairs, which is an absolute nightmare, but I sat down to take the paint off one stair and before I knew it, even though I didn't particularly enjoy it, I'd done four. Just because seeing sort of the fruits of my labour was was a very motivating and inspiring thing. If we want to get inspired, the best way to do it is to actually just make a start. If we just sit around waiting just to feel suddenly inspired or suddenly motivated, we're going to be waiting a long time. So it's better to make a start and that will encourage these feelings of inspiration, encourage these feelings of motivation. Number two is to recognize the difference between things that are actually going to actively help you get towards your goal and things which are just sort of colorful distractions that make you feel like you're you're moving forward in some kind of way but you actually aren't by this i mean try not to get caught up in the planning mode so if i have a task to do or a project to start i am buying a new folder i probably have a new notebook colored pens some highlighters washi tape that fancy cellar tape with the patterns on mm, yes i make schedules color code I will go just completely over the top in terms of preparation, thinking that I'm working on it. I'm not working on it, I'm procrastinating. It's a case of recognizing that you could do, you could continue the task without it. Not every task calls for that kind of a setup, but it's a distraction from the actual task. So try and to recognize the difference. Some things will help, some things won't help. Make sure you're happy with which is which. Third point is define the term finished for your project. What is finished going to actually look like? If you're writing an essay, it could be that finish is just reaching the word count. It could be that you're aiming for a certain grade and you have to get a certain amount of criteria for that. It could be that you want to spend six hours on it. Decide what exactly it is that you are aiming for. Then it's going to be a lot easier to get there because you're going to know how far away you are from your goal. You're also going to feel some sort of sense of that it's done when you actually get there. Especially with creative endeavors, you don't know what finish is gonna look like because there's always room for improvement. There's always room for you know revisiting. This is the problem with um, finishing a creative task. So decide before you start what is finished, where you're gonna draw the line, when is this work gonna be complete? When are you gonna be satisfied that it's done? Look at this horrible day. You can literally see the darkness battling the daylight there. It is getting up. Ooh, what a scrunchy. Right, anyway, got distracted telling you how not to get distracted. That's a new one, isn't it? 
My next tip is something that I'm pretty sure I invented, but there's a chance I didn't, but I feel like I did. Um, it's called the 10 minute challenge, and it's based on this idea that I still, I still have, and but definitely used to have more so, that I couldn't get any work done unless I had this massive expansive time to do it. So unless I had the entire day to get a task done, then why bother? What's the point? Which is such a flawed way of thinking. I think I built this way for a couple of reasons. The first thing is when you're used to procrastinating, you start to include the time you spend procrastinating in your sort of allotted time for like to do the task. So if something's going to take an hour and you you put it off for two hours, then in your mind that thing takes three hours to do, which isn't the case. The other reason I think that I thought that way is because I wanted, I was always aiming to get things finished. So even if I could do, you know, five minutes on it, it would get me five minutes so closer to getting it actually finished, but that wasn't important to me. I wanted to get it done. If I wasn't getting it done, then what's the point? Which is again, is an incredibly flawed way of thinking. So I invented this thing called the 10 minute challenge, which is basically if you, you know, get your phone, set yourself a timer for 10 minutes time and just sit down and see how much work you can get done. You're not trying to get, you know, the best work you've ever done. You're not sitting there for hours or anything. All you're going to do is prove to yourself that in 10 minutes, you can actually get a fair bit done. The good thing with 10 minutes is that it doesn't feel like too long. It doesn't feel like you're going to be sort of sitting there tied to your computer or tied to your pen for an incredible amount of time. It's just a case of just sitting down, spending 10 minutes, seeing how much you get done and I promise you that you will be surprised you can get a lot done in 10 minutes when you do proper focused work so just focus no distractions for 10 minutes see how much you get done and you'll soon start to realize the value of getting work done in just small sections the reason that this is useful is if you have a day where there's lots and lots of things happening I would kill the bits of time in between those things. I would be waiting around for the next thing. I would always do that. If I'm going out in 20 minutes and I've got 20 minutes to kill. But now I'm trying to change my mindset so that if I'm going out in 20 minutes, that means, you know, probably spend 10 minutes getting ready and I've got 10 minutes for work then. I can actually get something done in that 10 minutes. It's not a case of, you know, thinking it's hopeless because I have to wait for the next free day to actually get anything done. The problem is, is that if you think that a piece of work is going to take three hours and you just sit around waiting for a three hour bit of time that you've got nothing else on, you're going to be waiting a long time. That doesn't really happen. You never really end up with just hours of time to kill. It's not, it's not likely. So if you're finding it difficult, getting work done, just think, I'm just going to get this tiny, tiny little bit done. I'm just going to spend five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, just working solidly without distractions and just, just prove to yourself how much you can get done because you will be able to get a lot more done than you expect. My next point is use rituals as action. So if you think about my first point where I talked about how an action can inspire and motivate, Start, start the ball rolling with something a little bit more easy, a little bit more, something that's gonna sort of let you in gently to the work mode. So it could be something like lighting a candle just, or making a cup of tea, just doing something nice and gentle, something that isn't too stressful, but that is gonna sort of inform the next step. That's what you're looking for. It's a case of trying to get yourself into the flow of things when you're resistant. Make yourself a cup of tea, then sit down and just let the sort of the order of events unfold. And my last point is that we all use words to describe ourselves. So if you're someone who considers yourself a procrastinator, you might also think of yourself as maybe disorganized or forgetful or lazy or, or things like this, okay? These words are just words. They, they do not describe you. You can break free of these words. If you are disorganized and forgetful, your life probably just lacks the clarity that you're looking for. If you think of yourself as lazy, then you probably just need to work on your self-esteem. Don't ever define yourself and then live within the boundaries of those words because I promise you, you are a growing, flourishing, changing human being. There is absolutely no, no use to defining yourself by these words. If other people define you by those words, let them. It means, it means nothing, it means nothing. Don't let that affect how you see yourself. If you want to get something done and you sit there thinking, oh, well, you know, I'm just so, I'm so disorganized, I'm so lazy, then it's, it's up to you. You can change that. That is something that you have control over. 
don't just condemn yourself to living a life ruled by these words because it's not going to benefit you at all. You are stronger and you are better than those words. They're just descriptive words. There are, they are no, look how much of my hair's come out. I'm just gonna have this weird half mullet. Okay, there we go. Right. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope there was something of use in there for you. Thank you for coming back to watch this video. Um, I'm gonna be trying to make more of an active effort in YouTube. Um, I've actually made the decision to, but no, I'm not gonna tell you because I need to tell other people first. You need to got me there. You need to got me there, but I will tell you that soon. Ooh, mystery, fully. I'll catch up with you in the next video. It was lovely to see you. And uh, thank you for stopping by. Good luck with your project. Go get it done. You can do it. Yeah.